Everybody loves nostalgia and historic racing is a massive part of the motorsport industry worldwide today. The engineers and designers here at EB Motorsport evolved a unique process to allow those enthusiastic Porsche car owners to be running and racing today by producing components that simply wouldn't exist without them. And as they say, they're making the impossible happen. Should we go see how they do it? If you love cars, then you're going to love this video and you're going to love this gentleman, Mark Bates from EB Motorsport, because he's about to show off exactly what he is capable of here. So for starters though, Mark, can you introduce yourself? Tell everybody what it is that you're making here. So I'm Mark Bates and the company's EB Equipment, also known as EB Motorsport. We're a 60 year old, um, engineering manufacturing business that's diversified into the automotive market, uh, reproducing uh, no longer available components or rare items, mainly for classic Porsches and 911s. Uh, for example, this is a recent batch of uh, what's called as 917 endurance calipers. Um, uh, they're fairly unique. Nobody else is, is recreating these currently, as far as I'm aware. They're manufactured on our Haas UMC and ST10Y and other than the spring retaining clip that we have subcontract made, every other item on the caliper is made here. So the, the main body is machined from 6082, the pistons are 7075, you've got stainless steel caliper, um, uh, brake pad retainer should I say. Uh, again, all the tooling for doing all the pressings was machined on the, on the Haas units. Uh, and simple things, or they look simple, are uh, the fixings for the holding the, the parts together, uh, uh, grade five titanium, uh, all the bleed nipples um, and brake components are again TI, and we wouldn't be able to machine those without the advent of, uh, of investing in the fourth axis. And the thing is, what's interesting is you've just covered so many different materials and they're quite exotic materials, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, typically the, the, the aluminiums and the titaniums, you only see them in things like uh, aerospace or offshore oil and gas occasionally. Um, and obviously motorsport. I mean, we're not regulated, but s these calipers are uh, as they were used in period on, on one particular car, particularly the titanium fasteners. Um, so yeah, we, we do tend to specialise in uh, that grade of material along with magnesiums and other, um, other, other materials of such. Right, what's the process here then? What is it you're doing? So these are off a more uh, recent model 911. These are off a GT2 uh, competition car. So this is, this is typical of what we might receive from a customer. So these were shipped up with various issues for uh, inspection and maintenance. It, it, uh, for example, if you look here, someone's had a bit of a go at um, doing uh, stud repairs. Uh, they've actually got them misaligned so that the studs are, uh, they need reworking. So, and again, you've got a, um, a valve seat here that needs replacing. Th there is no detail for these. So uh, the design guy, Jake upstairs, he'll reverse engineer these. So we've got uh, some CAD for Matt to work on uh, using the Hypermill software so we can do the relative machine work. Again, we're going to replace all the valve guides in here. Uh, you can't yeah. buy those, so uh, we do that machining here. Yeah, and uh, this is an example of a... So if we, if we jump over here, this is a... We've got a lot to show you. That's this is typical of, of a headworks that we do. So this has been... Uh, we've done full port geometry on here. Again, five axis CNC porting from... Uh, uh, designed upstairs and, and carried out on the UMC. Um, all, the, all the seats and the guides are machined here from um, uh, Trojan and Colsebro. They've also been modified to take a flame ring to replace the head gasket. This allows us to run higher compression where necessary and much more reliable in a competition environment. So a lot of your customers as well, they're racing these cars. They are, cars. I mean, we're, uh, we've got to uh, provide a, you know, a, a bespoke service. Uh, it could be one-offs, it could be production items, but all, all of this is, uh, has to withstand the rigors of, uh, in, in some cases, endurance motorsport. Uh, for, for instance, six hours of what used to be endurance is now a sprint race. Uh, this is a, another uh, a new venture for us, manufacturing one-off pistons. Um, many people said y y we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't undertake this in-house, but um, we've um, it's something we've started and we're going to continue with it. So this is a first example of something we're working on, and it's part of this uh, this uh, group of components for one engine. 
Another right. mainstay for us. Can I just say what's interesting? You didn't even start in motorsport, did you? No, we didn't. The family business came <laughs> from uh, from farming, from agriculture. We're a, a six, 60 years making uh, storage and conveying systems uh, that's then evolved into uh, all sorts of industries. And, and this has grown out of a, a hobby, really, and really customers approaching us and seeing just our general approach and our ex technical expertise and really uh, the group of guys that we we have around us. Yeah. You know, we're only as good as the, the team that's behind EB. And the plant um, and, yeah, and the, the trio of equipment that you have. So, yep. Right, what's this one as well? Because we are going to go over to the um, see the machine in so, just a moment. So this is a typical example of, of, a, of an engine case that we might get. We mentioned earlier that uh, today with the, the increase in value in historic cars, people are... Uh, you know, they're more conscious of a matching number. So that means, does the engine case uh, match the, is it the correct one that the car left the factory with? So often the case, customers will want us to do repairs and salvage work. So if you look at this one, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's the some of the studs, uh, head studs on this one have been pulled. These have been snapped off because they've been left in that long. It, it, other than that, it's a stock case. So we'll do machine repairs. We'll put this on the UMC. And like anything, we'll do the full Renishaw probe on it to mm -hmm. check for any misalignment. Um, and you'll get check data, the won't you? We always take the data first and then we share that with the customer to tell him exactly what we think's needed so there's no surprises at the end of the day. Right. And it means that Matt's got an idea of what we, you know, how we approach uh, uh, the repair work on that case. Right, let's move on to this one because, okay, so, different material. Aluminium case, uh, this one's magnesium. So again, one of those materials, it's fairly free cutting, uh, easy to work with. The difficulty with mag is people don't like dealing with it. It's difficult to, you know, the when you machine it, you've got to be careful of, of fire and things like that. Uh, but we're well accustomed to it. We also get involved in welding the magnesium. So sometimes these cases have either heavy corrosion or the worst one we had was fire damage. And we actually uh, took the scan data and remachined the whole back section wow. from, from uh, billet. This is all on the UMC. All on the UMC, UMC and, um, and grafted that in. So again, this case has had pretty much the full works from us. It's had all the head studs repaired, um, time inserted, all the perimeter ones on this. Um, and again, if you if you can look down inside the spigot bores, you'll see the, the bearing webs. Normally they're fairly squared off. Uh, we've developed our own uh, unique process for what's called boat tailing to reduce windage losses in the case yes. and improve performance. Ooh, for the racing. It's it is. It's constantly yep. improving this. This is technology from 50 years ago and you're kind of making those little tweaks along well, the way, Well, I mean, aren't you? this case here is from 1974. Oh, there you go. And some of the mods, that they've been carried out from day one. What we've done is taken the modern approach to it and used uh, compute flow dynamics uh, in order to develop that. Um, Again, more works inside the uh, the case for oil bypass modification. This one's been machined to take the later GT3 oil pump. Oh, wow, look at this then. Right, what have you done here? So again, uh, more magnesium. Uh, a common issue with these 915 gearboxes is the bearings, uh, they, they wear out of shape, twisting the cases. So again, full clean strip on the UMC. Advantage of the Renishaw probe and the five axis is this allows us to, it's very important that this main bearing area here and the differential bearing carriers are at 90 degree plane. And that's what is what you love about having it a full is. five axis. Yeah, and, and, and so when we when we mount this on the fixture, we can do a full probe to see where the, where the deck heights, if there's any misalignment, if this area here where the side cover goes on is worn out around, because when you put in extra performance through these, you, you want to retain them. You don't want any fretting, any movement. And again, back to materials, we've got magnesium here that we start to machine with, and then this bearing bridle insert, it's made in 17-4, notoriously difficult to machine but uh, the UMC copes with it uh, you know without problem um, jumping on quickly uh, one piece bearing Told retainer you there was a lot. <laughs> this one happens to be our variation of a you know a part they used on the later turbos that we've evolved to suit this um, that seats there that's titanium Wow. Um, okay. Again, this this case for its final application, all the fasteners on here, uh, oil drain plugs, they're all machined here in titanium as well. Um, and that's on the lathe, isn't it? 
Uh, these are all done on the on the ST10 with the Y axis. The STN. And the reason we went down the fourth axis on the on the lathe is so we could do this kind of machine work in uh, with the minimal amount of ops. We didn't yeah. want to transfer components to a second stage on a different machine on a mill because there was a bigger chance of uh, you know misalignment issues or tolerances. Yeah, regularities. So, yeah, uh, the 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 two machines work harmoniously together and allow us to make all these components and uh, right, efficiently we have to move and on. Oh my gosh, there's like two minutes. No, there yeah. isn't, right? Couple more because I mean, look at the size of this. That uh, for the table as well that you're going to put this on. Like yeah. that's a massive, massive part. This is a. This was the biggest challenge we've done today. Um, this is a one-off uh, reproduction of a gearbox for a 9046. Um, so we reverse engineered an original box, and that started off as a 200. And, uh, correct me, maybe 230 or 270 kilo billet of 6082. I mean, to fit that on the table was a struggle, but just the, the machining envelope, it's a fairly big machine, but I think, uh, uh, I think from memory, we had 0.2 mil of tool clearance in order to reach over. Just across the yeah, top. Yeah, just to skim in and get in there. That's crazy. And, and the challenges posed with machining this on the UMC, I mean, we run uh, Hypermill software and it's, uh, you know, uh, we can't fault it, but even with their support, um, it was a challenge for us. So it just shows you how we're pushing uh, the boundaries on the machines, the software, and the team of guys that we've got here. Right. I know you've got some more parts, but let's go see the machine. And this is the machine that you're making all of those parts on. So in all honesty, why did you go for this machine? Uh, it was a combination of things. I mean, when we first started looking... Um, it, we were really only looking to cut uh, aluminium um, and fairly small components. The reality is since we've had it, uh, the functionality of the machine, um, the operating system, um, it's allowed us to really push the boundaries of what we want to do and really the limits of the machine. Are you afraid to push it? Uh, no, not really. If, uh, if we can get the stock on the table, we'll cut it. I mean, uh, a bit like the gearbox we looked at earlier. We've, uh, we've cut uh, billets that big that we've had to lock the axis out on the table. As I said, the gearbox we've had, uh, you know, 0 0.2 of a mil clearance on the on on the tool uh, for collision. What's the hardest material you put on there? Uh, we've had meragings and 17-4 uh, is notoriously difficult to cut, and that's a regular one for us. Uh, the higher grade ENs and things like that. So titanium, um, a lot of the specialist metals. I mean, the bulk of its work is al aluminium, magnesium, um, but as I said, um, it, it's had just about uh, every different uh, material. And it's the can... versatility. I know you're yeah. praising the software and everything that comes with yeah. it, but it's the versatility with the probing and everything. That's yeah. what you like about this machine. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it allows us to, like I said before, we, we can put, uh, for instance, this... Uh, this bell housing on here, this gearbox case, we can probe the, the whole unit before we do any machine work with the Renishaw, the data's outputted, we can then discuss that with the customer and then we can make a decision on the best course of action on what that case needs, what it doesn't need and then we can go from there. Uh, I think we've got a uh, 40 tool changer in there so we've got plenty of space to fit what we need in. Um, we don't often have to change them but that would be really down to discuss with Matt. It, it's, it, you know, the we have minimal amount of issues with it. It's four or five years old now. Uh, like I said, access, cleaning, um, routine maintenance. And yeah, and the guys at Hass have been great right from day one. Uh, really mm -hmm. good relationship with them when we've uh, when we've needed them. They've always been there to support well, us. Well, I don't need any notes then, do I? Because you've just covered everything, yeah. haven't you? <laughs> You're very happy. So really, yeah. ultimately, why would you tell anyone, you know what, go out there and buy a Hass, a UMC? Uh, I mean, like I said, it's been here. We've we're still running it. The machine's been fantastic. The support's been great. You know, nobody's perfect all of the time, but I'd have no qualms. Uh, and we've said uh, when we do expand the machine shop, uh, we we will continue with Hass. You'll grow. Yeah. They'll grow with you. Yeah, there's no question. We've been allowed to. Uh, we've grown our business because we've had the the Hass machines here, and we've looked at the versatility of them, and that's allowed us to expand our product portfolio, uh, machining work, and really develop on from there and it's been a rapid growth this last 10 years you know what it's so interesting you've just seen only a few of the parts that they're able to make here at eb motorsport there you have it well done to you i couldn't have covered half of that so thank you so much no, more than welcome